Hello, welcome to the Monday, January 8, 2018 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Last week, Renato came across a pretty concerning incident that uh, actually later turned out to be more than really what he initially saw. What Renato originally saw was an affected Oracle WebLogic system that had a crypto miner running. Okay, so at first, nothing really all that big and scary, just yet another crypto miner. But uh, what it turned out later was that this is actually a very recent publicized vulnerability in Oracle WebLogic and we found a few hundred additional systems that were affected by this same event. Now we came across a log actually that listed around 900 infected systems, many of them running PeopleSoft. And the concern of course here is that companies typically keep an awful lot of personal identifiable information in PeopleSoft. In this particular case, you may have been lucky because the goal, as I said, of this particular attack was installing this crypto coin miner. We went ahead and we tried to notify the victims here. Not sure how well this worked at this point yet, but we got a feedback from a couple of the victims that uh, yes, they were looking into this. If you are running WebLogic, if you are running PeopleSoft, uh, please uh, take a look at the diary and make sure you're not affected. If you are affected by this crypto coin miner, well, uh, maybe you're lucky and that's the only thing that happened, but this is a very easy exploitable vulnerability. So you definitely do want to take a a second look at the system and make sure it didn't get exploited by anything else in addition to this uh, crypto coin miner. We're not going to make the full list of infected IP addresses public at this point, but if you have any questions about this, uh, let us know. To identify systems, well, Renato is giving you some indicators of compromise here. Also, we do have this new thread feed that uh, based on this event, actually, I started publishing last week. There are a couple of Cloudflare IP addresses in this thread feed. Well, it just happens that some of these mining pools are behind Cloudflare. I do leave them in the feed for now because they're still mining pools. They're just in addition to mining pools. Well, there may be other things as well, and that's probably true for a number of these IP addresses. So don't use it outright as a block list, uh, but uh, certainly something to follow up on if you do see connections to these IP addresses. And then we got a couple of updates regarding Spectre and Meltdown. Lots of patches being rolled out uh, by various companies, including, for example, Cisco. Also, Qualcomm confirmed that some of its processors are affected by this flaw, but only a very short note is what I was able uh, to find. I'll add a link to Qualcomm's security bulletins page. Haven't seen anything yet as I'm recording this, but hopefully there will be a little bit more detail later. And unrelated to Meltdown and Spectre, there is a second issue that only affects AMD processors. In particular, the platform security processor that's part of recent AMD processors. That's essentially a trusted platform module or TPM in these processors. And it has a firmware vulnerability that's being addressed with an updated firmware. AMD has released an update for its partners. Of course, you will then have to flash your bias or apply these patches once they are made available by your motherboard vendor. The flaw here is a stack-based buffer overflow. Now, due to this particular subsystem not using any of these standard exploit mitigation techniques like stack canaries and the like, it's certainly possible that it will be exploitable and a proof of concept exploit has been released. And if you're using a Western Digital MyCloud drive, it's time to disconnect it from the network. A number of vulnerabilities have been made public for these devices. The most critical one, in my opinion, 
is a backdoor account, a username and password that you cannot change and that is now widely known. It can even be exploited with systems that are behind a firewall via cross-site request forging, which is another vulnerability that was discovered as part of this release. And then there is also an unrestricted file upload vulnerability on these devices. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.